you know, trying to act as if uh, that there, there's a them and an us instead of just an us. And I'm always suspicious of uh, you know, a, a politics that is dividing people instead of bringing them together. Uh, I, I think now's the time for us to bring toge uh, come together, and I think that uh, economically, immigrants can actually be a huge source of strength to the country. It's so one of our big advantages is we've got a younger population than Europe, for example, or Japan, because we welcome immigrants, and they generally don't. And that means that our economy is more vital, and we've got more people in the workforce who are going to be out there working and starting businesses and supporting us when we're retired and making sure Social Security is solvent. All those things are important. Uh, so this is a priority that I continue to have. Frankly, the problem I've had right now is that, to, and I don't want to get into sort of inside baseball about Washington, but basically uh, the rules in the United States Senate have, have uh, evolved so that if you don't have 60 votes, you can't get anything through the United States Senate right now. And several years ago, we had 11 Republican senators who were willing to vote for comprehensive immigration reform including John McCain. They've all reversed themselves. I can't get any of them to cooperate, and I don't have 60 Democrats in the Senate. Uh, and so we're going to have to do this on a bipartisan basis, and uh, my hope is is that the Republicans who have said no uh, and you know, have seen their party, I think, uh, use some unfortunate rhetoric around this issue, uh, my hope is, is that they come back and say, you know, this is something that we can work on together to solve a problem instead of trying to score political points. Okay? All right. Who's next? Yes, sir. Right here. Pacheco. My name is David Pacheco, and I work for the New Mexico VA health care system. Uh -huh. My uh, question is that I think as an integral part of being Hispanic, being from here, home is, is very integral to that. And not only for Hispanics, for all New Mexicans, for all Americans. And yet I hear stories of my family members, friends, veterans that I treat, of losing their homes due to this economy that we've been through or are going through. And I guess my question is, what are we doing to prevent people from losing their homes? I know education is, is truly incredible and, and it moves people beyond what we can ever expect but if we don't have homes to go to what good is the education well uh, the housing crisis helped to trigger the financial crisis um, and and it, it's a it's a complicated story but essentially what happened was banks started seeing money in peddling uh, what looked like these very low interest rate mortgages, no money down, started peddling these things to folks. A lot of people didn't read the fine print where they had adjustable rate mortgages or balloon payments, and they ended up being in situations where uh, they were in homes that they couldn't necessarily afford. The, bank, the banks made a whole bunch of money on all these mortgages that were being generated. Uh, but what happened was is that when the housing market started going down, then all these uh, financial instruments that were built on a steady stream of payments for mortgages, they all went bust, and that helped to trigger the entire crisis. So the, the, the housing issue has been at the heart of the economic crisis that we're in right now. It is a big problem because part of what happened over the last several years is, is that we built more homes than we had families to absorb them. And w what's happened now is, is that housing values have declined around the country, in some places worse than others. Uh, you know, in Nevada, in Arizona, they've been very badly hit. In New Mexico, I don't think we had the same bubble, uh, and so prices have not been as bad, uh, badly affected here. But you know, overall, across the country, housing lost a lot of value. Now, this is a multi-trillion dollar market, so there's no government program where we can just make sure that whoever's uh, losing their home, that we can just 
pick up the tab and make sure that they can pay. And frankly, there's some people who really bought more home than they could afford. And they'd be better off renting, or they're going to have to make adjustments in terms of uh, their house. What we have tried to do, though, is to make sure that people who have been making their payments regularly, who are meeting their responsibilities, if they could have a little bit of an adjustment with the banks, if, if, if some of the principal was reduced, if some of the interest was reduced on their mortgage payment, they could keep on making payments. The bank would be better off than if the home was foreclosed on. Obviously, they'd be better off. And as the housing market starts picking back up again, which it will do over time, although not in the same uh, trajectory as it used to, right? It's going to be much more gradual. Then potentially the bank could recoup some of the money that it had lost by making the adjustments on the mortgages. So we've set up a number of these mortgage modification programs that are out there. But, uh, but I don't want to lie to you. Uh, you know, we've probably had hundreds of thousands of people who have been helped by it. Uh, I think there have been a couple of million who've applied. But that doesn't meet the entire need because this is such a huge housing market. Uh, and what really is probably the most important thing I can do right now to keep people in their homes is to make sure the economy is growing so that they don't feel job insecurity. That's probably the thing that's going to strengthen the housing market the most uh, over the next uh, couple of years. If we've got a growing economy, unemployment is gradually being reduced, then people are going to feel more confident. They're going to be able to make their mortgage payments. New pe homeowners, uh, people who are potentially buyers of homes, are going to say, you know what, I don't mind entering the market because I think things have sort of bottomed out. That starts lifting prices, and that uh, gets us on a virtu uh, virtuous cycle instead of a negative cycle. Uh, but it's going to take some time. Uh, we're working our way out of overbuilding in the housing market, uh, a lot of uh, not very uh, sensible financial arrangements in the housing market. Uh, and, uh, and you know, we've got to get back to sort of a, a traditional, more common sense way of thinking about housing, which is, you know, if you want a house, you've got to save for a while. You've got to wait until you have 20 percent down. You should go for a mortgage that you know you can afford. Uh, you've got to, there shouldn't be any surprises out there, right? That kind of traditional thinking about saving and uh, thinking about the house not as something that is always going up 20% every year and you're going to flip and take out home equity loans and all that. We, we've got to have a, a, a different attitude, which reflects what you talked about, more of an attitude that this is your home. This is not uh, just a, a, a way to make a, a quick money. Okay. Yes, sir. I know it's a little warm in here, by the way, but... Uh, uh, you're right, Mr. President. It is a little warm, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I want to thank you again, Mr. President, for coming to Albuquerque, New thank Mexico. Thank you. Uh, I have several questions to ask you. I'll make them short and brief. I am one of those persons that has been helped by that modification program on my house. And I want to say thank you because it has helped my family, and I'm the one of the persons that has helped. And I want to say thank you. That's great. I appreciate that. It, it has helped me and my family. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, and it, it has helped several. I mean, it's helped my family. I just don't know how to say thank you. Second question. Um, we can't always depend on government to help us as far as education is concerned. I do thank you. My wife is a teacher in an elementary school. It all has to start at home. We as parents have to educate our children on how to get educated. It starts at home. And I want to thank